Alrighty, hello everyone, and welcome to a Maya 2023 tutorial on how to put fences along a curve. So I've been continuing to work on my Rainbow Road Wii um, HD remaster, and of course it has the railings down the side. And so I modeled a fence part, but I wasn't originally sure how to put them along a curve, so it could follow this track, and here for instance, go along this section here and deform while doing it. Um, because I thought like, oh, if I place them manually, not only would it take forever, it would also be extremely difficult to get any sort of curving sections here. So I actually figured out a way, and it's not too horrible to do, it's just a bit of a pain in the butt. So just real quickly, I will delete all the previous fences. Okay, sorry about that. I realized I accidentally deleted my original railing, so that's a bit embarrassing. So let's go take a look at it. So here I modeled a railing section. Um, it's designed to be like infinitely tileable. So if you put it, if you put another one, um, like here for instance, as you can see, that would just line up there, and it continues infinitely. Um, so I exported it, painted it, substance painter, etc., etc. And now the issue was I didn't know how to put it on to the curve, um, to the road, sorry, and I couldn't find a single tutorial online on how to do that. So. I actually figured out a way on how to do it. So what you want to do is you want to select your road section of where you want the fence to go. So here I'm choosing the initial start. Um, let me just hide this. Just to, there we go. All right, then go edge, select the starting position of the edge you want and go to here, select the edge. And you go modify, convert, polygon edges to curve. Um, I just do the default settings. I don't know if there's a difference. I haven't noticed. Um, just rename it. I'll go starting road curve right. Okay. And then what I want to do is I want to select my railing section and focus on it again. I mean, you don't have to focus on it. I just do it. Um, you could go up here to the mesh section. So you click on it and you click on this thing. So create a mesh network. And here you go. It's created. And it's all instant, so, um, sorry, to my knowledge, it's instant. So any changes you do to the original section will be reflected in every single one of these ones. So just to leave this for now, or I guess you can rename it. Starting road right. Cool. Then you want to shift click on the curve and go deform curve warp. And once it does that, uh, just ignore that. I don't know what it means. <laughs> um, you want to look at it over here and here we go. So you might be thinking, okay, that's cool and all, but now it's all stacked on top of each other. And this is where you kind of have to do a lot of uh, trial and error, pretty much. Um, there's really just, all you can do is just guesstimate how much you need to put along here for your section, and it can change each one. Um, and the worst part is that the distance X for like the offset or whatever doesn't change depending on the actual one so let's say let's let's put in a no it's not enough one two three five thousand okay so you know that looks kind of right it's bad there but you might thinking you might be thinking like oh okay if I just have a distance x of five thousand I can just double it and make it and it'll be fine no it doesn't actually work like that I'm not entirely sure the specifics but it does not work that way so you kind of just have to do a lot of playing around and trying to see what works. Um, yeah, as you can see, it does take a lot of fiddling around, so I'm just going to fiddle with this real quick, and I'll be right back. Okay, so this is just a little bit of like a hack, I suppose, but what you can do is you can set it to like a stupid high offset, and as you can see, it's really, really spread out here. Um, but as you can see, the gaps are all, uh, they're slightly bigger than one of these sections, so what you could do is just double it, and because it's a little bit bigger, I'm going to just chuck on a couple more, so I'll try 43, and see how that looks. And you know, looks pretty right, so I could just uh, see if this works. Because it actually deforms it on long the offset, so if we put it like that. Like, okay, you know, looks kind of decent. Um, And of course you can fiddle around with it, because this... um. 
the mesh will follow the curve itself. Any changes you do to the curve will be reflected on the mesh. So, but it's keep in mind, um, because it's deforming everything as you change it, it'll lag a lot. So, you guys be better off hiding it. Um, I know I won't I won't hide it for just to show you, but if I go here and select this, I'll go soft select something massive like that, and if I pull downwards, as you can see, it pulled downwards. Um, and I believe because of the way that the projection works, if I grab this edge and pull downwards, the curve should follow. There you go. Um, so yeah, that's a really, really handy way to do this. But then you get to slightly harder things. So let's take a look here, for instance. So here, as you can see, it's kind of um, leading up to a loop. Like, not really a loop loop, but like a loop jump. So if I do the same thing again, select, modify, convert to curve, and let's call this pre-jump, sorry, curve left. Then I select the railing section, create a mesh network, rename it, pre jump left, and then I select this, select this, deform, curve warp. So, as you can see, it is not facing the right way. Uh, so this is where it gets kind of neat. So what you can do, just to like start it off, I suppose, you select your curve, go up to curve surfaces, and reverse direction. And now you can see it's at least facing upwards, but it's still not facing the right way that you want the curve to go on. So what you can do is you select your curve, sorry, you select this curve and duplicate it and I'll rename, oh, sorry, I'll rename it. And I'm just gonna call this aim curve. And when you go back to your mesh network, if you go to the curve warp deformer, you can see an aim curve. And um, what this basically does, it'll aim the the warp towards that curve. So if I select this and I go modify center pivot just to make the pivot here, and I just raise it upwards. Um, not that I recommend you directly move it upwards because as you can see, it's not there. So what you can do instead, and if you go here, to control vertex, you see it's got like a thousand different vertices, and that's not good either. So to reduce it, you just go curves and rebuild. And this will cut down how many vertices you have. So it'll become much easier to just shift everything over. So if I just do that real quick, I'm not trying to be too neat right here, just because I just want to show you how it works, but of course. I would recommend taking a lot of care for your project. Alright, and let's see what this does. So go back to my curve warp deformer, aim curve, and then middle mouse click and drag over here. And there you go. As you can see, now it is correctly following the curve. And if we go back to our distribute, let's add something stupid big. One, two, three. There you go. And you can see it's following the curve. And if I change the aim of the curve, let's just select all of this. Soft select it, because why not? There you go. And you can even change the way it faces. Can you make it point downwards? You can make it point downwards. So you can get some pretty funky um, effects and results out of doing this thing. Um, I just control Z. However, one thing I haven't noticed that you can do is I you can't really change the um, angle, I suppose. So if we go here, let's say I wanted it to stretch further outwards or something like that. As you can see, it's it's not doing it. Um, that's not really squishing it down. Oh, I mean it is squishing it down, but you got what I mean. You can't really like deform it on each end. Um, but yeah, that is projecting fence parts along a curve. So I would just undo all these changes real quick. I'll go back to my original file just so I can show you again. And yeah, we can take a look at it. Okay, now I'm back to my original file. And 
as you can see we got all of this going down all that way uh, we got some there's some here as well oh, whoopsies there's some here as well and I just want to show you what I meant about the can't really get the deform to work so as you can see here I would like it to just terminate there um, let me just hide this real quick if we show you the original rainbow road um, as you can see it just terminates there um, but I'm not to my knowledge, I don't I don't know of a way I can do that. I I guess I could go to deform and make like a um, lattice deformer, but for my purposes, I'm just gonna leave it. Um, and you know, it does look pretty good. Like there's some errors somewhere. Like I think of where the curved direction is like incorrect or something like that. Um, but for the most part, it is quite good. You can uh you can get some issues though if you're curve has not enough polys I think or it's not sharp enough rather if we go back to here this section um, if I just hide the railing poles as you can see it's kind of deforming there if I show you the group so this is upper jump rear where's rear 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 Oh my lord. <laughs> this is one issue of having like a thousand different curves. Um, hmm. I'll just make it visible. Yeah, so if I delete it. No, no. It's not you. I just isolate. That's not that one. <laughs> That's the aim curve. Whoopsies. All right. If I isolate the aim curve, the original curve, sorry, as you can see, um, it is a little bit deformed. The, I guess you could add more points and vertices to try and get it a little tighter. Um, but I mean, I think it looks fine. Well, you're not really gonna notice it once all the other detail is in there, and it's quite a small detail, anyways. Um. So yeah, as for offset. I don't know if there's like a mathematical relationship or anything that can make it easier for you to determine what offset is good. Um, I was wondering like maybe it's based on the object distance and how many you have, but I haven't tried. <laughs> um, but yeah, I hope this was helpful. If someone does know how the offset works, I would gladly update this to get the correct information out there. But for right now, I just I just trial and error that's how i do it um so yeah thank you i hope this was helpful and maybe i'll see you guys next time